Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'll be your host this evening. Uh, now, today's episode is going to be a really fun one, uh, really great information on the basics of gesso. So if you are interested in any of the products that I'm going to be showing you today, make sure to go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in today's class code, which is JL307, which is also written down over here on the screen. It'll be there for the whole show so you can reference back to it. But if you type that code into our search bar, the teacher's cart should pop up and you can check out all of the stuff that I'm going to be going over today. Now, <clears throat> just so you know, the beginning part of this is going to be very information heavy, and so I know that there's going to be a lot of stuff thrown at you. I know I have my amazing moderators, Amanda and Frida, in the chats, and if you have questions on stuff that I'm covering, feel free to pop your questions in the chat. They might hold them till the very end of what I'm talking about, uh, just to kind of make sure I go through all the things. But I really feel like if I'm going to tell you about today's gesso, modern gesso, I really need to tell you about the history of it and kind of where it started. So. Um, gesso, the word itself actually translates from Italian to the word plaster. So that actually, uh, historically makes a lot of sense because historically it used to be made of slaked plaster and an animal hide glue. Now animal hide glue very commonly could be like rabbit skin glue. Um, and that is actually, yes, made from animals. So there is that. Uh, right, but we've moved past that. Yeah, um, very glad we've moved past that. Uh, but the slaked plaster is a little bit more kind of confusing. So it's made of gypsum, which is kind of roasted, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then they actually make that into uh, what's called gesso grosso, which I'm probably mispronouncing, I'm very sorry, but grosso, which is a fun word if I'm actually pronouncing it right. Uh, but that essentially is a modern day uh, take on plaster of, pa plaster of Paris words. So it's essentially they make it into plaster of Paris. Now that plaster of Paris is soaked in a bucket for 30 days. Now during the 30 days they agitate it and um, then they let it settle and then the water that's on top because you know the gypsum is going to be heavier and it'll settle to the bottom just like pigment would uh, but the water uh, the water at the top gets dirty and so then they take the dirty water off, they add in fresh water, and then they keep going for 30 days. Now, what that does is it removes all of the impurities from the plaster, and then it also adds in an extra like water molecule so it doesn't bind to itself. Because if you ever use plaster of Paris, you know as soon as you get it wet, it'll completely harden. And this is a process of kind of removing that ability so that it doesn't harden into lumps. Uh, now, it's considered slaked plaster as soon as the water on top is clear, which is kind of cool. Uh, but that's a whole whole process and it takes a whole month. Uh, now granted, there is a wonderful guy named, I uh, love the name, Jerry, Jerry Tressler, Tress, Tresser, Tresser. Uh, that guy, he made actually a recipe to make a smaller amount of slaked plaster uh, that I think he does it in about 30 minutes, which is cool. So if you are interested in actually attempting to make a historical gesso, you can take a look at his recipe, which is kind of cool. Now, because the gesso historically was a uh, slaked plaster and animal hide glue, uh, I did want to also touch base on what an animal hide glue does. So not only are they mixing the plaster and the animal hide glue, because the glue kind of acts as like an adhesive, so it sticks to your canvas or whatever it may be, um, but animal hide glue is pretty brittle. So it doesn't have a whole lot of flex to it. Um, and it also is used as kind of a sealant before you apply anything to your canvas, uh, historically. So, uh, they would take their canvas fibers, whether it be cotton or linen, they would put an animal hide glue to seal it down. Now, uh, that is not exactly archival. We have figured out with modern day technology that any of those animal hide glues, uh, they over time, it's an organic material. It kind of does break down a little bit, and it also does absorb moisture from the environment over time. Now, that absorption is not great for your uh, canvases and things like that because it will cause it to flex and crack over time and also possibly delaminate your uh, paints from the surface of your uh, painting. So it's, it's not the greatest option. So wonderful technology being today, 
We do have a more modern option, which is PVA, polyvinyl acetate, I think is what that stands for, pretty sure. Uh, but that is not only archival, it is animal friendly and also pH neutral. So it is very good for your paintings longevity wise. Uh, but um, I, I believe you could make a, a traditional gesso using PVA and the plaster, which would be kind of a really cool experiment. I have not done it myself, so possibly one day. Um, but that mixture though is uh, pretty brittle, like I said, with the, the animal high glue and just the fact that it's plaster. So typically speaking, it was used on surfaces that were really hard, like wood. Uh, now that makes sense because back uh, in, I want to say earlier than the 15th century, they were doing a lot of tempera paintings. So tempera being an egg binder, that is also very brittle. So they can't put it on canvas. It needs to be on a rigid surface. Uh, but what they have also used the uh, gesso for, because it was a plaster, they let it thicken up and they could also do the relief work, which is really fun. Uh, and then they could also gild it and paint it or even just leave it as is for like almost like a sculptural thing on a wall, uh, which is really, really cool. Now, that's the history of gesso and kind of where it started. Now, we're going to kind of, uh, well, actually, before I jump ahead and give you the more traditional version, uh, we should jump ahead to about the 15th century, though, uh, because that is about when artists started going from tempera into oil paints. And so the use of oil paints gave them more beautiful colors and it was, you know, it took a lot longer to dry so they could blend. They could really do a lot more techniques with it that they weren't used to with the tempera. And so they were really excited about it and it started becoming more popular. Now with that, they wanted to paint on canvas. It's a lot easier, you, more lightweight, can transport, you know, sell it off to somebody. It's wonderful. But with gesso being gesso, it was a hard thing because it, it wasn't flexible and your canvas is fabric, it's going to flex. So to fix that, they would take the historical gesso and mix in like a drying oil, like a linseed oil or walnut or poppy, things like that, into their gesso. And that is considered a half chalk ground. So that would have uh, allowed the, the gesso to have a little bit more flexibility. And then that would allow them to then paint onto a canvas. So that is still a historical gesso because you have the base, but it's getting a little bit more modernized. Now, we're gonna jump into a more modern gesso of what we have today. Now, uh, that, I guess, kind of took place in, what was it, the 1930s? And that's uh, when uh, the acrylic paints came onto the market. They were created in 1934, I believe. Uh, so with the advancement of technology and acrylic paints being made, gesso became a little bit more modernized. And now what we usually see on the shelves today, anything that's labeled gesso, unless it specifically calls out that it's meant for oils or pastels or watercolors, it's all acrylic based. All the ones that are just labeled gesso, it's gonna be an acrylic based gesso because it's more stable, it has more flexibility, it's going to stand the test of time. Uh, so with that being said, a modern gesso, typically speaking, uh, is an acrylic gesso, so it has the acrylic polymer, it has calcium carbonate, which if you guys are looking up calcium carbonate, uh, it's got a lot of different names. There's marble dust, whiting, uh, chalk, there's all kinds of different things. Now, what's really cool is that depending on where you are in the world and depending on what kind of like uh, calcium carbonate you get, it can change the texture and kind of how the gesso feels when you apply it to your canvas. So I know, if I remember correctly, the ones uh, that comes from France is really light, so it's really finely ground, so it also gives you a very uh, really smooth surface. Now granted, you can find a more coarse gesso, I'm sure, in France, but it's just, uh, I, from what I remember in my research, there is one specifically from France that's really, really light, so it's, it's kind of fun to see the different kind of uh, world aspects kind of coming into making your, your art supplies. Um, but, so acrylic polymer, calcium carbonate, and a pigment, which is usually a titanium white. So uh, this is, if you actually break it down in that manner, Essentially, this is a white acrylic paint with calcium carbonate in it. Now, 
Granted, some of the manufacturers also add in things that will uh, allow it to have a little bit more flexibility as well as preservatives so like your bottle of gesso doesn't go bad on your shelf. Now, I can't tell you exactly what they add in. That is a proprietary information and it's gonna kind of change from company to company and manufacturers. They all have their own recipes and they're gonna keep that close to their you know, company and keep it secret. But uh, if you are interested in kind of making your own gesso, that's the basic recipe. And I did add in a couple of things into the teacher's cart, like the um, acrylic polymer, which is like GAC 100 is essentially a very basic acrylic polymer. You don't want one that is going to slow the dry time or uh, like airbrush medium, I think is a little thin. Um, but this is a good basic acrylic polymer. I think there's also one in the Windsor and Newton line that I found and I popped that into the teacher's cart. I also added in some titanium uh, white pigment so you guys can kind of play around with it that way. Uh, but we don't have uh, calcium carbonate uh, that we have available, but I'm sure you guys can find that as well. Uh, but uh, let me double check my notes here. Uh, yeah, I think that's essentially all the details of modern day gesso kind of in a nutshell. Do we have any questions so far? It's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, but now the really cool thing about the modern day gesso is because this is acrylic based, we don't technically have to seal our canvas before you use gesso on a raw canvas. So uh, with the examples uh, that I have here, uh, and we have a ton of gesso on our website. There is a lot. If I tried to go through all of the gesso, uh, everybody behind the camera would be so mad at me because we'd be here for four days. <laughs> um, so I picked, and I actually went through our sales reports, and I picked the top five selling gessos. Now granted, if you're counting, there aren't five up here. There are seven because I pulled the, the reports for 2023 and 2022 just to make sure I had a good mix. Um, now, between those two years so far, uh, I can tell you the top three are right here. We have Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso was our number one selling across the board. This is a fantastic gesso, and I'll show you guys all these as well in more detail. Uh, then the second one was Golden, uh, Golden, just white gesso. The third was the Liquitex, Li Liquitex words, it's going to be one of those days. Uh, Liquitex uh, Basics Acrylic Gesso. Now, Liquitex does have a professional line as well. Usually it has the blue label like this, um, but that one didn't make it to the top five on either year, which was a little surprising. Uh, but the Liquitex Basics did. Uh, now, after those three, it kind of shuffles around. That's why I pulled these other four. Um, we have the New York Central White Gesso, the Creative Inspirations Acrylic Gesso, and then I have these two on the sides. Now these were actually kind of neck and neck, so I technically just pulled both because I thought that they were both really, really fun and a little different. So we have, they're both Liquitex brand. One is black and one is clear. So I'm gonna show you those as well. Um, but I wanted to kind of make sure that you guys knew kind of what I was going over and why I was going over it. But let me move these off to the sides so then we can get to the fun demonstration part where I will show you how to gesso, properly gesso your panels. Now, let me, let's go to the overheads where I can show you guys all the different together. Um, so here are the five. I don't know if it's coming across uh, on camera, but there is a subtle shift in the whiteness of the canvas. Now, uh, just so you guys all know, every single one of these, I did stretch these by hand and I stretched them with a 10 ounce raw cotton uh, canvas. Nothing, there's absolutely nothing on there. It's just canvas. Um, so every single one of these started off, and there's a little fiber, excuse me. Every single one of them started off this color. And I can even, yeah, here, you can see it. So um, every single one started off the exact same, and I put two coats of every, of, of the brands on each one. Um, now, if I'm actually, to be 100% honest, my eye can tell that Golden is actually the whitest of all of them. But it is so close to the New York Central. If I put those two right next to each other, I don't know if that's coming across on camera, but they are like almost identical. 
which is so cool. But um, these three are also pretty much identical, which is wonderful. Um, but the thing is with, with gesso, and I know there's gonna be somebody out there that's like, which one's the best? I can't tell you that because it is such a personal thing and it's gonna be on whether or not you want it thick when you apply it, whether or not you want it to have more of a gritty texture, cause like the texture on all of these are very similar, but there are some that have like a really, really, really gritty uh, feel to it. Actually, I believe Holbein has uh, four different types of gesso. They're all white and then it's uh, an S, M, L, and XL are the different types of gesso. And what those uh, letters, like small, medium, large, and extra large, what that means is the, the grit that's inside the gesso, kind of how gritty it is, is how large those, like, that grit that they've added. So the S, I believe, is very smooth. The XL would be really rough. So if you're looking for something that's a little rougher, that's where it depends on what you want. Now, with the two that are really, really bright white, if you're an artist that works with, like, glazes, that is uh, really, really thin and you wanna layer them, but you want the whiteness of this canvas to kind of make your colors pop, the whiteness of the gesso is gonna matter. Whereas like if you're somebody who's gonna completely tone your canvas and it doesn't matter that it's a crazy stark white, these are great. Like these will all do really wonderful. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's just entirely dependent on you as an artist. So I do wanna get that out of the way. Um, now, I am going to show you all of these though, uh, application wise on a big panel here. Cause when it comes to applying them, I mean, they all pretty much apply the same, but it just depends on, I guess, kind of the way that you want to apply it. If, if you're applying it with like a palette knife or if you're applying it with a brush, uh, that's kind of the, the big difference. Now, this is Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso. Comes in a giant tub, and it's pretty thick. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's very, very thick. Uh, now, I have a bucket of brushes over here somewhere. There we go. Uh, and I'm just using our Creative Mark disposable brushes. Now, uh, let me also grab this. So this is just a palette. Um, I wanted to show you just how thick this is. So it is brushable. You can spread it out, but this is almost like a concentrated uh, gesso. Like this is a little bit thicker than I personally would like. So what I do, and you got a couple options here. I like to add a little bit of water, and this is just uh, regular water. Uh, technically, if you are adding water to your gesso, you should add distilled water. Uh, since this is a demonstration, I didn't grab the giant bucket. I forgot, sorry. Uh, but you want to add distilled water that way you're not introducing bacteria into your gesso because if you do that and something gets in there that's your base layer to your paintings it, it could be a problem over time uh, so let's start the archivability right at from the very beginning I know archivability is actually not a word you guys remind me every time but it feels like it should be all right I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So what I'm looking for is like the consistency of kind of in between heavy cream and sour cream, kind of like in that realm. So it's a little bit more fluid. And honestly, I normally do this with a palette knife, but I happen to grab the brush. So um, it's nice consistency. So this is just raw canvas. When I apply gesso, you see how much I had on my brush? That's as far as it gets because this is super absorbent. <laughs> so when you apply your gesso, the very first coat is going to absorb and you're gonna need a lot more than you really think you do because it's going to soak it up like a sponge. Now, if you are looking to kind of alleviate that, um, because like I said, you technically don't have to seal your canvas if you're using an acrylic-based gesso. Now keep that in mind, acrylic-based gesso. If you're using an oil-based gesso, there's a different process and I'll touch base on that a little bit later. Um, but that acrylic-based gesso 
will seal your canvas while also giving you that ground, which is lovely. Um, but that first layer is going to soak it up. So let's grab a little bit more of this same gesso here because I actually grab a little bit more water because that completely took all that gesso. Mix it up real fast because I wanted to show you the difference between if you were to seal your canvas first with PVA. Now on this canvas, I hope you guys can see that there's like a line. I coated half of it with PVA and half of it is raw. Uh, now with that, that really soaks it up, right? But like this is like the same amount that I had before. That's, that's a huge difference between that and that much space. Like, and I can definitely keep going on this. Like it, I could spread this out for days. Um, now, so I've already sealed that, uh, side of the canvas. It spreads really easily. I don't have to worry too much about brush strokes because it, it spreads out really nicely, really fast. Um, and then on top of that, like the PVA and the cost of gesso is pretty comparable depending on, you know, what you're getting. Uh, but it will kind of alleviate that soaking it up kind of problem. But if you don't want to have to buy PVA, that's not actually crazy necessary. Um, but it will make a huge difference on the first layer. Any questions so far? Let me get that out of the way. Yes. Actually, yes. Uh, does the Michael Harding non-absorbent ground work well for oil and acrylic painting? Michael Harding non-absorbent ground, is that um, oil-based or is it acrylic-based? That is the biggest thing. Now, if it says, here's a, a good um, kind of hint into whether or not it is an oil-based ground or an acrylic-based ground. If you can clean it up with water, it is acrylic-based. If you have to use a solvent to clean your brush, that is an oil base. So if it's, and I somehow got just on my shirt. Well, this is why I can't have nice things. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, if you have a, an oil ground, you can only use oils on it. If you have an acrylic ground, remember that you can put oils on top of acrylics. You cannot put acrylics on top of oils. The reason why is because that oil is going to reject your water-based media, just like oil repels water, and it will not stick. So you can have an acrylic base and put oil paint on top of that. It's not a problem. You can also have it with an oil ground. Oils go great on that oil ground. I misspoke. Question? It's oh, a yeah. non-absorbent acrylic primer. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Then acrylic primers. So here's the thing with gessos. There are a lot of words, and actually I'm really glad you guys said that, because there are a lot of words that are used in, like, it's all synonyms for gesso. And I grabbed a couple, synonyms is the right word. Synonym? Synonym. Yes, synonym. Thought about that for a second. Uh, so I grabbed a couple of different canvases because I wanted to show you. These are these are all pre-made canvases. Uh, they are all primed and ready to be painted on. And so if you don't want to have to go through the process of actually gessoing and preparing your surfaces by hand yourself, there are options out there. You don't have to do it. You can just grab a pre-made canvas and just start painting on it. All of these canvases, when it says that it is uh, primed or gessoed or it has ground on it, those are the words that you want to look for that means that it's just ready to paint. I know that there are people out there that say like as soon as you have something like this uh, that you should apply another layer of gesso. That is entirely up to you as an artist because if the surface is, of the canvas is not what you want, you can change that with gesso. You can sand it always wear a respirator or a mask if you, you know, protect your lungs, sand it, apply another layer. It'll be nice and smooth. Uh, you can adjust it that way, but it's not necessary technically. You have a question? Yeah. Can you talk about when you would want to use PVA sizing? Yeah. Um, but before I get into that, actually, before I jump there, let me just show you these real quick. Um, so Practica, it's two pack of canvas, um, acid free acrylic priming. Priming is a word that is used quite often 
when it comes to gesso. That means that this has primer, a gesso on it. So that's the same kind of thing. Priming, gesso, same thing. Um, so that one, you know, it's because it's acrylic based, you can use oils, acrylics, alkyds, all of those things because they will all stick to this. Not a problem. Then I have protons. Now I was going to remove the plastic on this. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's the only thing that has this attached. <laughs> but this is, and there's my reflection, a toned canvas. So it actually has a primer on it that is not white, which is lovely. Um, all media toned painting panels. Now this one says, where did it go? Acid free archival primer. There's that primer word again. Um, so that is already gessoed and ready to go. Um, here you go. Paramount universal primed. Anytime you see universal, that is the exact same thing as a acrylic based gesso. So that means that this can accept acrylics, oils, alkyds, all of that. Um, granted, usually with gesso, it's not great for watercolors. They don't really stick well on them. There is one exception that is our yes canvas because that accepts all media. Um, so if you're looking for a pre-made canvas for watercolor specifically, that's your option. Um, now, uh, does it say anywhere down here? Yeah. Triple primed with acid free titanium white acrylic primer. So sometimes it will call out how many layers are on your canvas here. Now that's great because when it comes to oil painting, you really have to make sure like that acrylic based gesso seals your canvas to where that oil is not going to penetrate through the gesso and get to the fibers of your canvas because that's how it starts breaking down your canvas. This is a barrier. Same thing with a PVA. Um, now, in my opinion, and you know, I'm sure there are people that will argue this with me, I say that bare minimum, three layers of gesso if you're gonna be painting with oil. And I mean, not thick layers. You never wanna apply gesso in a very thick manner. Um, thinner layers and then layer them up. That's better for it. Um, but I say bare minimum three layers if you're going to paint with oil. So if you know that this only has two layers of primer on it because it calls it out, that might be when you would apply another layer of primer onto this just to protect your canvas. Now, this one is one of my favorites. <laughs> this is called Senso, and this is primed and ready to paint. So this is a universal acrylic primer, but this is the linen. You can see it on the back. So this actually is, oops, excuse me, uh, this is a clear primer, but it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have that grittiness that my other gessos have that I um, have over here. Uh, so this texture is really, really soft and smooth. It's quite lovely. Um, and I very much love this surface. It is so much fun, but it's acrylic primer, so you can use acrylics, oils, all the things like normal. And then last but not least, I wanted to also show you this. Centurion OP Deluxe. I know personally the OP stands for oil primed, but it also calls it out right here in case you don't know the acronyms for brands. I understand if you don't. Deluxe Oil Primed Linen. This is primed, and it, if you don't know and you don't read it, you, you might think that this is an acrylic primer. It's white. You know, it, how would you know unless you read the, the label? Um, but it's, you also could smell it. It has a, like a little bit of that oil smell. <laughs> Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely going to be for oil painting only. You can't put acrylics on here because that already has that linseed oil in the gesso, uh, that it's going to have that oil primed ground kind of a situation. So it's going to accept oils really, really nicely. And it kind of really lets it sit on the surface, but acrylics will not go on here and be archival over time. Now you were talking about PVA. I just happen to have a bottle of PVA here. Uh, now, I'm going to call myself out here. Yes, it looks like a animal trying to chew through this. I might have had some struggles with the childproof cap. It, I've been using the, like you can see it's a huge bottle and I'm down to like this much. I've used this off and on and it gets, I got, it got sticky. It's glue, essentially. So I, um, I, I prepared another bottle that has a little... <laughs> I uh, Emmy proofed my bottle. Yes, I did. Uh, so I have PVA sizing here. Um, so you were talking about you wanted to know the when when it would be appropriate to PVA size. Like when would you want to do that? You would want to do that when you have a raw canvas uh, or raw linen. 
uh, the cotton, linen, anything that uh, you know, you're know you going to have as a substrate. Sub substrate. I, I think I need more coffee today. <sighs> Somebody send me some Starbucks. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so what this does, not only does it seal your canvas, which is really nice, it also will uh, tighten. Like if you are really new to stretching canvas and you stretch your own canvas uh, or linen, whatever it may be, uh, and it's raw, if you put this on it, this will actually tighten all those fibers up because as it dries, it contracts and kind of pulls itself in. So that will tighten up your canvas. So if you don't have that drum kind of sound that you should have when you have a stretched canvas, uh, it should be at least pretty tight, but this will absolutely tighten your canvas up, which is perfect because you don't want to have a whole lot of give when you're painting on it. You know, you don't want to be painting on a loose curtain. That's not great. So um, whenever it is absolutely raw uh, canvas, that's when you want to size with PVA. Now I'm going to grab quickly. I have a little dish here. Uh, let me not put that on there. I'll move the world's greatest gesso out of the way. Uh, so I do always shake my PVA because the, um, the particles that are in it do settle. So you want to make sure that you shake it. Um, it's probably best if you kind of tilt it back and forth or like, you know, swirl it kind of thing. I, cause that, if you shake it like a maraca, like I do, it kind of does introduce air bubbles and, um, that's not great, but I shake it like a maraca anyway. Uh, if you leave it on the t counter or the table, like I can see bubbles through the bottle. If you leave it down for just a minute, it usually settles, but like I don't have the patience to slowly tip it, but it's because I have this bottle specifically, my bubbles will float to the top and I can just squirt out the, um, the PVA. So I'm gonna do a quick little demo here. Uh, it's fluid like water, right? See, a little will, absorb into your uh, brush here and then it's going to do just like the gesso did here it goes on like almost white oop I got a fuzzy excuse me if you have fuzzies that go into your gesso or your PVA get it out immediately or it will fuse into that layer um, but what you want to do is put a good layer you don't want puddles that's the thing you want a nice thin layer no puddles right just like that so it shouldn't be running off, shouldn't be going crazy, but you should get enough to like really soak into your canvas. Now that is just one layer. Bare minimum, what I usually do is two layers, three if you're feeling crazy, you know? Three is a little unnecessary. Now if you want to do uh, acrylic gesso onto your PVA, you can get away with just one layer if you really want to, um, because again, that acrylic also helps seal your canvas. Uh, but if you are doing an oil, primer on your canvas you need to and you're not doing an acrylic as well uh, you need to do i want to say two to maybe three coats of this pva and i mean really saturate it really get it sealed because you do not want your oil paint going through and getting to the fibers of your canvas it's just you want to make sure that that doesn't happen oils just eat organic materials like cotton or linen it's just going to happen so there's my world's greatest gesso. There's my PVA. I'm gonna get this out the way. Now that I have PVA. And um, yeah, so here's one layer of gesso. Here's two. So the more layers of gesso you put onto your canvas, the whiter it's gonna be, that more bright white kind of a thing. Um, now we're gonna do our number two selling gesso, which is golden. And yeah, bright white acrylic, bright white acrylic primer. So um, this is also coming, comes in a tub, but this is a little bit thinner than the Jerry's World's Greatest. It's, it's pretty thin. And this one is also very easily brushed on. Again, when it comes to that first layer, you really wanna get it into the fiber. So like you can really scrub it in there. That's why I'm using a disposable, uh, well, technically this is a varnish brush 
but I think this is kind of like becoming my quick uh, workhorse of the studio brush. It's a really solid brush. It takes a beating. And what's great with the gesso, it washes out. Like I'm, I'm gonna have like seven of these brushes. It takes me like no time to clean them. I love it. But I can really get brutal with these brushes and get a good layer and scrub it into the fibers of my canvas, especially for that first layer. You really want it in there. Um, so that's the first layer of gesso and it uh, it's a little bit thinner um than the jerry's so you can tell the difference here because i didn't have to thin it down in order to get that to really spread on you have a question Speaking of thinning it down do you yeah. have any rules about like how thin to make it i know there's rules with acrylics about how much water typically it's it's because this is essentially an acrylic paint you want to follow the same exact rules no more than 30 percent water now if you are worried about that um adhesion kind of being a problem instead of adding water add a medium we have airbrush medium that is almost the same consistency of water it's instead of adding water you're adding in more acrylic polymer so that adhesion isn't going to have a problem gac 100 is the same thing um we have all kinds of different mediums out there um oh I also forgot, instead of using PVA, another way to seal your canvas is also matte medium. That's fun. Any any acrylic polymer kind of medium that you can really scrub in and get it to absorb down into your canvas. Question? Talking about adding to your primer, can you add acrylic paint into the acrylic gesso to tone your canvas? I'm so glad you asked that. I will get to that towards the end. <laughs> I have I have fun things to show you. I'm very excited about that. But that will come later, I promise. Uh, so the next one, though, is the Liquitex Basics Acrylic Gesso. Now, this one comes in a very handy-dandy squeezy bottle. It is quite soft, so you can actually squeeze the bottle. Um, I'm just going to actually just pour on a little bit there. Um, normally, I don't pour my gesso straight onto my canvas like this because you never know if you're going to pour too much on there. I usually put it into like a little dish like this because it's also super easy to just clean up. Not a problem. But to alleviate the time. Now, this is a little bit thicker than the golden. As you can see, it kind of has that... Um, it can retain your brush stroke. So if you, this is the, why I'm like, they're so different. Uh, <laughs> This can retain brush strokes. So if you're looking for more of a textured kind of surface, this is going to dry and kind of flatten out a little bit, but you can get some texture with this. And if you're adding in textures with medium on top of a textured gesso kind of surface, if that's how you work, this can work really great for you. Uh, something that's a little bit thicker. Now, again, this is only one coat. And actually, let me go grab the golden. So here's the difference between the golden two coats and one coat. And you can really see, again, the difference. It's surprising what another coat of gesso will do. And then, uh, oh, is this? No, this is Liquitex Basic, sorry. Got the wrong one. Here's two coats, one coat. So this one is not as uh, stark white as the um, golden or the New York Central. But again, it's one of those things that if this is something like the texture of it that you really like, and I'm gonna try and show you guys the texture as much as I can. We're gonna try and go to that dynamic camera in a minute here to see really how that does. Now, let's go for New York Central White Gesso. It's becoming a quickly a fan favorite. Also in a very squeezy bottle, uh, very easy to squeeze out. I'm gonna do the same thing here. It is a little bit thinner than the Liquitex Basics. So it's gonna be very brushable, very easy to smooth on and spread out. You can also really scrub it in there because this is the first layer, right? And it, again, very similar to the golden, it's gonna have that really bright white, but here is two layers and you're one layer. And it has a good, good texture to it as well. Now, Last but not least, the last white gesso that we have is the Creative Inspirations Acrylic Gesso. Now this also comes in a tub, and this one's really thick too. Um, that's the lid, excuse me. <laughs> it's stuck, I was playing with this earlier. Uh, so this one, uh, I'm not gonna actually thin this down, but again, this is one of those ones that like, you can see just how, I feel like I can do the like, I, I'm very nervous if this comes out, 
this is gonna be this is gonna be the blooper reel that you guys use for the clip. It worked. <laughs> that just gave me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> nice. But yeah, you can. This is this is thick. Um, actually, yeah, I could probably sit here for. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. But this right here is one that if I don't thin this down, you can get a good amount of texture. And again, that first layer, I really wouldn't try to do with the texture, but I want to do that for this one so you can really see. So for the first layer, I would do a really thin. Um, and then for the second layer, I would start doing this texture. Let me add, bring it over here. There we go. So this is one where you can start retaining those textures if you like texture in your work. Now again, this is still gesso. It's still gonna be that absorbent ground. So it's going to really adhere to all of your layers that you put on top of this. So if you work, again, with the really thin washes of acrylic uh, or something like that, um, this is a really fun way of just using your mediums in a different kind of way. Now, uh, let me actually, while I have that here and we're on this camera here, I don't know if this is gonna be visible because it's really hard to see uh, with the naked eye, but here we go. Uh, here is just a little piece of the raw canvas, right? With the Creative Inspirations texture of the gesso. You guys can see that like surface. It's got that kind of gritty, kind of scratchiness. That's what I would expect from a gesso. And then this is nice and soft, right? So hopefully you guys can see that texture of the surface. Uh, so that's Creative Inspirations. Here is the Liquitex Basics. So this one feels a little bit uh, grittier. I don't know if you guys can really see like all the little like gritty bits. And that's where, you know, the gessos from brand to brand can vary is kind of the size of the grit that's in it. So some of them might have more of a fine kind of texture. Uh, and then again, the application on how you apply it is going to make a difference. Uh, so there's the creative, or I'm sorry, the Liquitex Basics acrylic gesso. Then here is the golden gesso. If I can get this flipped around here. Ooh, here we go. All right. So here is the golden. I feel like between golden and the Liquitex, this is a little bit finer. You see those little bumps uh, from the gesso. It's a little bit smoother and a little bit more uniform. And again, it's just one of those things that like, it has that grittiness of the acrylic gesso that I would expect in comparison to the raw cotton. And then we have Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso. I love saying that. <laughs> just rolls off the tongue. All right, so here you go. It's actually, I would say very similar to the golden in the texture. Maybe a little rougher, but it's ever so slight, right? And then last but not least with the white gesso, we have the New York Central. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see the name. Um, this is also very similar to golden where it's <coughs> much finer and it's gonna have that smoother surface uh, so if you want to do like portraiture and you're looking for a very flat painting, this might be a really nice surface for you to be using um, with the New York Central Gesso and just on the, co uh, the cotton. I feel like it kind of almost retained the texture. It was quite lovely. But again, it still does have a little bit of grittiness, but it's just, it's so smooth. So that was the texture of the gessos. Now for the... A little bit different, a little bit fun. We have the Liquitex Professional. And here, let me scooch this up a bit. Um, we have black and we have clear. So let's go back over to the overhead because I want to show you guys the difference um, and not get this in the way here. I need to peel that off here. All right, so this is uh, primed. This is primed with the gesso, I know. It looks very similar from the raw to the, the clear gesso, but it has that that grittiness that I need from that gesso, but it crystal clear, which is lovely. So it adds a tooth, but it doesn't have any um, kind of pigment in it, which is lovely. Uh, so again, nice squeezy bottle, 
that you can actually squeeze out flip top lid, which I do love. And you see it's white. I swear it dries clear. That is the acrylic polymer. Oh, I almost forgot I have PDA over there. <laughs> so let me actually spread it out a little bit more. Again, this is that first layer. So it's really going to absorb into your canvas and you need a lot more than you think you do. And you really want to scrub it in there and remove all of the fuzzies that are floating around my studio and get into the layer of your gesso. <laughs> but this is what I wanted to show you. This is a lot uh, whiter than this right here. And the reason why is because that acrylic polymer, when it's wet, it is like a milky white that will dry crystal clear. Again, this is two layers. So two layers of that and it's almost like it's raw, right? Uh, now for the really fun one that I do, I do love, uh, the black gesso. Now this is gotta be one of my favorite black gessos. Again, squeezy bottle, flip top lid. This is so surprisingly dark. Now, uh, warning for this one. Uh, and I also do have a primer brush. I totally forgot about this one has a little bit of a softer bristle. But you notice how the bristles are dark at the end? That happened. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use this again because it does tend to stain your bristles. I have stained about three brushes with this black gesso. So if you are looking to switch back and forth between white gesso and a black gesso, uh, make sure you have specifically a brush for your black gesso because you don't wanna have any kind of residual black uh, pigments in your brush when you go to brush on the white gesso because then you'll have a gray gesso and that's probably not what you're going for unless you're painting my table like this. Uh, okay, so same thing. It brushes on and you can see it really wants to absorb into that canvas because the canvas is like a sponge and it looks like I just made a black hole. Um, it is so dark and that is one layer of gesso, just one. Here is two. And uh, I will say when I coated this down with the first layer, I almost didn't think I would need another layer just to get that darkness. You still want another layer to seal your canvas, just to make sure. Um, but you can see it, it's really dark from the very beginning and it's just quite lovely. And it doesn't, doesn't go through. You can see it's still raw canvas on the other side. So that is the black gesso. I do love these for like if you're carving in different skies and paintings and things like that. Um, but it's, it's very fun to paint on that. Now, you guys were talking about tinting your gesso, right? Now I have my palette over here. Let me rip this off and show you some fun stuff. All right, cause actually, I'm gonna just get this out of the way because I want to also show you, you can do the exact same process on a cradled panel. All I did for this was take my same exact canvas, I glued it to my panel using Yes Paste, which is just a, a neutral, a pH neutral uh, archival glue. Uh, and it's kind of like a paste that you uh, put on with like a spatula. I really like it because I feel like it, I'm have more control than like a fluid kind of adhesive. Uh, and then because that was a adhesive and I put this face down onto my canvas and then I put a giant block of um, paint essentially on top of it, it added so much pressure that a little bit of the glue did come through the surface of my, um, my canvas. It's fabric essentially. So to alleviate any of the glue doing anything weird to the surface of my panel. I did do two coats of PVA on this just to seal it all down and give me a uniform surface that I don't have to worry about, right? Now, let's grab the New York Central Gesso. So this is a white gesso, and I'm gonna grab a couple of acrylic ink and acrylic paints. Uh, I happen to grab this one just because green gold is one of my favorites. Uh, and then uh, this is the FW ink. So this is acrylic ink. So you can think of this as just like really, really, really fluid acrylics. Um, they're both acrylic based. They work great with acrylic based gesso. So because acrylic gesso that is white 
has that titanium, um, actually let me do two little blobs here, has a titanium white already added to your, um, your gesso. Anything you add to it color wise, you are now going to have kind of a pastel version of it. Also, don't we just love this bottle? Oh, the little, just is that great? That bottle it's their their larger sizes. Very it's cool. just like a little. You can just turn it open, and it's like a little squeezy bottle. While it's we're at very it, can easy. We talk about clear gesso tinting as well. Shush! I'll okay. get there. Right. Don't, ruin the don't ruin the surprise. Don't ruin the surprise. I'll get there. I have a I have an ooh and a ah moment. Okay. Just wait. All right. So because I've added this lovely, what is this purple lake color? I do love that color. I'm in my purple face, guys. It's a good, it's a good purple moment. Um, so because I'm adding the purple acrylic ink to my gesso, anything you add to your gesso, number one, is going to change the viscosity of your gesso. So if you're using the Jerry's gesso, that's the world's greatest and it's too thick, um, and you want to knock back the, uh, the viscosity, if you add acrylic, um, where is it? The acrylic medium, that'll do it. Or you can add something that's really fluid, like an acrylic ink, and that will also change the viscosity. So same, same concept as like you're adding water, only it's color. So there's a really fun pastel purple gesso that I can now tone my canvas with, right? So I'm gonna take this. And because I already have PVA on this, this will go very, very far. And you know I'm going to actually be painting with this, so I'm gonna just paint the whole side here. And I'm only doing half because I have that ooh and ah moment, I swear. I'm gonna show you. And get the fuzzies out of my canvas every time. So I just made a really fun pastel purple gesso. Uh, now, if I were to add a this is a little bit thicker on the acrylic. Actually, you know what? Let me use a much thicker acrylic paint. So this is gonna have that thickness and it shouldn't change the viscosity of, oops, it's sealed itself. It shouldn't change the viscosity. Wow, did I really? I'm just gonna do it this way. <sighs> I think I left it open too long. Uh, should not change the viscosity of my gesso that much because it's really thick paint. Well, not super thick, it's like a soft body. But again, I'm getting a more pastel version of that blue. We have a question? Yes, one of our viewers on YouTube noticed that you have only been grabbing for palette knives or dry brushes to put your gesso on the surface. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for that? Um, is there a different option that I should be doing? Like a wet brush or, oh, okay. So if, I mean, if you add water to your brush and it's wet, like you're just adding water to your gesso. Um, if you if you wanna do that, it's, I mean, you're not gonna be adding that much water, I would assume, but um, I would just not do that because then you're just adding water to your gesso and unless you're intentionally needing to do that, but you can also apply gesso with a palette knife because I don't, I didn't mix that in perfectly. I'm getting streaks of the blue, but again, because I have uh, had the PVA sizing on the surface of this, it's spreading really well. And a little goes a long way, so I don't have to make up as much of this color in order to coat my whole canvas. Again, I'm only doing half, right? Pretty blue. It's an ode to my bl blue phase that was just a couple months ago. <laughs> uh, now, for that ooh and ah moment, Man, are you paying attention? I'm so paying attention. <laughs> All right, so same exact color, but I'm gonna use the clear gesso. And again, this is going to change the viscosity of it, but because this dries crystal clear, as I'm sure you guys are well aware, it's going to be that really, really pretty purple. And I don't think I added enough of the clear gesso. So you see how fluid that is? I feel like this is more acrylic ink than gesso. That's still going to work 
it's still going to um, seal my canvas because it is acrylic that I'm using, including the ink. Uh, and it's going to kind of break down the grittiness of my gesso. That's the part where I would probably want a little bit more gesso than ink because I want that grittiness. I want it to have that toothiness. If that's not for you, you can add a little bit more ink and have it be more ink than gesso. That's totally fine. We are all different. We all work a little bit differently. Um, find out whatever works best for you. Now, look at the difference between that color. My goodness. It's beautiful. Oh, purple. And I have two brushes left. Almost like I planned it, but I just grabbed a bunch of brushes. That was an it. All right, so because this is clear and because this is not pure white, I am going to get a little bit of that uh, beige kind of affecting my color, but I can do a nice even layer just like that, or I can start taking, oops, taking this and doing little brush strokes and get some variations on that color, which is really lovely. And I'm just stripping that everywhere. It's okay. Again, the viscosity of this is a lot more fluid because of that ink. And if I also just go into this, she will be perfectly primed for a painting. Add a little bit of that pastel back in because we need a variation. Now who wants to paint on this panel? Right, isn't that lovely? All right, so there's my purple. Uh, now, I do want to show you uh, the difference and I did, I did this with the green gold earlier, so I do apologize, the blue's not gonna be visible. But when it dries, You move this so I don't get this everywhere. I probably had a little bit more ink in this than I did here. Let me tilt it a little bit. But that uh, acrylic polymer is going to also still dry a little bit darker because it's acrylic polymer. It's milky white when it's wet. But look at this in comparison. That's what, like, you're going to have a slight color shift. So if you want to test out what your, uh, clear gesso color wise is going to be. I always suggest doing it on a little throwaway palette. I mean, you can always keep this for later. Um, but the cool thing with this also, and uh, actually let's go to that side camera so you guys can see this in more detail. This is a huge difference between the gessos. So apologize for the reflections. Um, hopefully you can see this. Right? So this right here, it has a little bit of greediness to it, but not as much as this. So this Liquitex is a little bit grittier. There we go. Now you can see it. So that just has a little bit more of that, like, and that's just the gesso alone. It's just going to have a little bit more tooth. And that's why I'm saying, I can't tell you what gesso is going to be good for you you have to figure that out as uh the artist painting uh so it's just going to be dependent on you as the artist uh so i gotta finish priming my blue panel real quick but do you guys have i forgot i clogged the, the tip of this uh do you guys have any last minute questions because i know we're getting to the end of it i have just one more yeah um what's the difference between gesso and ground synonyms <laughs> gesso and ground. That's why I was saying um, other words that are used for gesso are primer, gesso, you can find acrylic gesso, you can find ground. Uh, now, specifically when it comes to other media, if you see oil ground, that means it is oil based. If you see acrylic ground, it's acrylic based. If you see a pastel ground, uh, it's not pastel based, but it's meant specifically for pastels. So that's going to be real gritty. I believe it's actually an acrylic based as well want to say it is. Um, but uh, then there is also a watercolor ground, which is, I believe there's, isn't, I know there's Daniel Smith has one, and then there's also, I believe Core has a watercolor ground. Um, both have a different texture to them, uh, but they both will allow whatever you paint that ground on to accept watercolor, which is really, really cool. So if you're trying to make your canvas uh, or panel a watercolor panel, you can paint it with a watercolor ground 
and then you have a good surface to paint it with, which is so fun. Now, again, the difference in color is wonderful. Uh, now, again, it, pastel's not bad, uh, but if you want a really, really, really vibrant color without losing that, um, without having a white kind of mixed into it, that clear gesso is just where it's at. So hopefully you guys can see. Yeah, I gotta hold this at an angle so you don't get the glare. <laughs> All right. Almost done. Because you guys know I gotta paint something on here. And I just gotta figure out what to paint on my purple and blue canvas panels. Any suggestions are accepted and appreciated. <laughs> There we go, how fun. So this is primed. And because again, I have that PVA on the underside, this is sealed well enough to start painting on it. Uh, and I actually got a little bit of texture there. Um, that texture is going to still uh, kind of contract down a little bit and flatten out because this is acrylic based. It's not uh, any of those ones that will um, kind of retain the texture. Uh, we have a question? We do. Yeah. Can gesso and sizing be used with oil pastels on paper? That's, yeah, it can, absolutely. Uh, now, I mean, you can also use pastels, like dry pastels, or uh, even oil pastels, technically. You could use them on canvas as well. Um, let me just grab these two. So, for an example, I did grab a couple other things here. I have uh, semi-hard pastels. I'm going to just do a quick little scribble here. Let's do green. So that way you can really see the surface texture. Oh, if I can get that up there. Uh, but this is pastel, so you can start blending it in. And I know all of these pastels, by the way, are non-toxic. Don't worry. I know what I'm sticking my finger into as far as my art supplies are concerned. Um, but same thing here. You can start moving around. You can even move it around with a little bit of water, which is really fun. Uh, and then you can also use charcoal on these. Because, like, if, I know if some people really love to do charcoal drawings, mixed media things, uh, or do a charcoal drawing and then do a painting on top of that. Kind of blur it out a little bit. And then I also have... This is just the ones that I wanted to make sure to show you um, that are not just acrylic paints and things like that. Let me get a different color. Ooh, let me do a red. Red will be fun. Colored pencil. And this isn't a water-based colored pencil, although you could probably use a water-based colored pencil. Again, that is technically more of like a watercolor, so I would probably use that on more of a watercolor ground than gesso just because that might not adhere well once you get it wet to the surface. But you got a lot of options as far as what these different gessos can accept. Um, and if you were to put this on paper instead of a canvas, it works the exact same way. It seals the fibers of your paper and allows you to paint on top of them, also with oils if you want to. Um, I actually just had a, a whole show on preparing your pa uh, paper for oil painting which is really fun. So if you guys want to see that, you can go watch it. But that is all about gesso. I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, while I made a big gesso -y mess up here. Um, again, if you guys have any questions about gesso, about kind of the ins and outs of how to apply it and those details and you didn't quite get the information from the show, you can always pop your questions into the chats. I make sure to go back through them and, and keep an eye on them and that way I'll answer you guys directly that way. Um, but that was it. I hope you guys had fun and got a lot of information. Uh, make sure you do join us next week though as well because we are going to be having a guest on. So it will be Facebook only. Uh, we can't go live to YouTube. Uh, so if you go to our uh, Facebook Jerry's Artorama page, uh, it will pop up same time Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the guest we're going to have on is Jeff Olson, and I adore him. He's going to be amazing. And talk about solvent-free painting with the Cobra water-soluble oils. So that's going to be a really interesting show, uh, and I will be on that as well with him. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!